Good morning. My name is Ian Hardingham. I am designer and lead programmer on Frozen Cortex, the future sports strategy game from the creators of Frozen Synapse. I am here today to tell you how our artificial intelligence works. We have a pretty great AI in Frozen Cortex. It can beat top players a lot of the time and it has no easily exploitable weaknesses. That's the key really. This kind of strategy game is completely undermined if there's something you can do against the AI that will always work. In a men with guns kind of game, it's a lot easier to buff the AI with better guns and more health than you to cover up those kind of holes. But in a game where it's simply a case of getting a ball past the AI, you can't really do that. So it was crucial right from the beginning that the Frozen Cortex AI was really good. So, the blue team are on offense. They need to get the ball up here with a white rotating thing around it and run it into the goal zone down here, the blue goal zone, their color. And I am on offense as the blue team. The AI is on defense as the orange team. And we're just gonna jump right in and see how the AI works. So the very first thing the AI does is it creates a plan, any kind of plan, for the offense to score. So it just gets the closest guy to the ball, runs to the ball, and he is then gonna run to the goal zone. It's as simple as that, that's how it starts. It doesn't matter what the plan would be, it can just be anything. The next thing the AI does is it defeats that plan. It doesn't matter how it defeats that plan. The AI is not yet trying to make the best way of defeating that and other plans. It's just trying to find one, and this is the closest it could find. Then the AI creates another plan that is not defeated by the existing defense, and the defense changes again to try and defeat not only the new AI plan, but the old one as well. And it does this several times. Um, so far, this guy's position is actually defeating all of the plans we've seen so far. From the very first one which went straight down to all the ones to this one. <coughs> and we're going to see that until we get a slightly new kind of plan. This guy can no longer cover all of the previous plans. He's got this spot here which he likes which will defeat all the ones he's seen so far. But he can't defeat all of those and this one. So we need to get a new guy involved. This guy runs over there. I don't know if that looks like the best plan to me. Maybe this guy should be running over here. But that's the whole point of this AI. What it's doing in this stage is building up every possible offensive plan it can to then create a good defense that will cover them all, hopefully. So this guy's gonna continue changing his plans. We got, a, we got one here which this guy actually can cover while covering all of the rest. So we're just gonna keep stepping along. And these guys, this is you know, these guys seem to think they've got these two are covering everything that's happening so far. And we're just gonna keep, you see it's very boring for AI, but it happens very quickly. Player doesn't have to do this. And we're still getting plan. We've got this guy involved now. He's gonna come across there, he's gonna come across here. So, so still we're seeing a situation where we've got three guys and they can cover all of the offensive plans so far. So we're just gonna keep going. Now these are just running plays so far. Um, and oh, we're getting everyone involved now. Now what's interesting is that the AI is starting to see with actually he's got faster players, James Fitzroy, all these guys I think have the same stats, yes they do. Um, speed of one green which is pretty good and the and my guys have speed of, of red two which is pretty bad. So as you can see currently they're favouring really rushing towards where the guy's going to try and get the ball. That's what you're seeing so far. At the very start of this calculation when there are only a couple of offensive plays to work with, the AI doesn't really know what's good and what's bad. But now that we've got like sort of 10 or 20 or 30 to play with, the AI is going to see which parts of the field cover most of the plans. And we can keep on going. Okay, and we've got our first throwing play. So in this one, he's going to run forward and then he's going to throw to this. This little blue zone is a, is a, is a point zone. It gives you two extra points if you have the ball in that zone. This guy's going to run up and he's going to catch it. And then he's going to run down here. Now, wow, it's interesting. So this guy is coming all the way, all the way over there to tackle him. Now again, you say, well, this guy is so much closer to the action here. Why isn't he doing it? Well, he's already used up up here. And during this start, during this part of the AI run, we are just trying to cover the entire field in as good a way as possible. So we're going to have another play here where this guy's going to throw to the same spot and he's going to run somewhere else. This guy is probably going to be able to move his position just a little bit 
to get there. In fact, we had this guy moving, and now we're seeing the defenders are having to come up with more than one plan at once. So now he's started throwing over here, and this guy's going to try and run for it. That's the speed line, that guy going over there. So what's happened now, as we've started to introduce some throws into the equation, we're seeing the defenders are not able to cover everything in such a naive way and they're having to do more than one plan at the moment. The whole idea of the AI is to find which defenders have to do more than they actually can do and have to make a decision to go left or right. So this is like an important part, an important step in the AI. So this guy is going to run down there instead and that's going to move him a little bit. This guy can move down here and intercept the ball. And again we're just going to see all the different plans we can and you can just see how the the AI plans are evolving you're seeing the defense try to react to all of the different hundreds of different things that the offense can do now we've got a two pass situation this guy's gonna run up there he's gonna pass over here this guy's gonna pass over here you can pass up to three times on one possession in frozen cortex although the AI only ever looks at two passes um, because it would take far too long to look at all of the three pass possibilities. That doesn't tend to be too much of a problem. And we continue to see just the hundreds of different plays that are possible and all the different ways that we can go. Now, as you can see, it's still extremely popular for the AI to run close to where the ball's been picked up. Like I said, he's got a speed advantage on me. And these little rings show where he can intercept the ball. So by being very close to me, by sort of bum rushing me, he's going to be able to cut off so many of my passing lanes. Now, a lot of these plans are not really something a human would ever consider doing. Running up here and having a very short pass to here, then having another short pass over here, that's unlikely to be something a human would ever want to do. But this whole AI only works if you get every single sort of possible plan that has not been covered yet. You have to get a full coverage of everything the offense can do. And because Frozen Cortex has randomly generated maps, that's different every single time. Now again, the turns end once the ball has been picked up. So we're running simulations of plays all the way to the goal zone, but in fact there'll be two and three and four and five turns before you get there. So he's going to run here and they're trying to work out the AI for looking into the future but once he gets there they're going to run the AI again based on the sort of the minute movement that these guys have made or maybe not minute and then it's a suddenly a different situation and they're going to it's going to recalculate it once again and we go on and on and on, on and <clears throat> there's a step in the AI that I'm not going to show you where we start to look at other players on the offense and they try to block the defenders so a, a full offensive play does not just involve the route from the guy getting the ball to the goal zone, but it involves all of these other guys moving into position and trying to block for him and everything like that. Uh, I'm not going to show you that right now. So we just go on like this. So now if I, if I commit a turn, then I'll be able to show you how the AI calculations change depending on what people do. So I'm just going to get rid of all of the AI plans here. So if I go and pick this guy up, pick this one up, and I'm going to move this guy to here, this guy to here, and how about we try some of this rushing business. Maybe we'll try him going down there, and try him going down there. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to commit that turn for both sides. I'm in debug mode, so I'm telling the AI what to do in fact, even though I'm going to show this calculations. So now we have a situation which is the same level but the next turn. So I'm just going to show you the same kind of calculations but see how they've moved, how they've changed depending on how the players have moved. So again, it's the same kind of thing, we've just got to find all of the routes to the end zone and with those guys moving so far forward the offensive possibilities have much reduced. But it's quite possible that the defense makes a mistake. With these long passes to the end zone here, we're probably seeing a situation where this, these guys can't actually cover everything. These guys can move to cover all of the passes around here, but then they'll be vulnerable to a pass over here. This guy can come up here and maybe run right towards the goal zone. So even though we're in a little bit of a dodgy situation, 
as the offense, I think we've probably got ourselves a couple of live options, really. So if I keep doing this, now I'm actually just going to, I'm going to finish talking to you guys about this soon, but I am just going to do a full run. Okay, and the AI has finished what it was doing. So, the defense has decided to put these two guys out here. This cuts off my passing lanes mostly here, but it leaves a little hole here. Now, as you can see, the AI has given the offense actually the best offense to beat what it ends up doing. That's just sort of something that happens in my, in my debug tools. So this play here will actually beat the defense as constructed. But the defense as constructed is what the AI has decided to do. It will cover the vast majority of the things that I can do on offense. So if I try and throw over here, I'm going to get intercepted by that guy. And all those kind of different things. Now this guy, the AI calculated that there really wasn't anything he could do to help with the defense. So he's actually sent him up forward in the hope that the AI gets a turnover and can chuck him the ball up there. And this guy, by being in the middle here, is covering a lot of runs in this direction. So there you go. A fairly short, hopefully interesting insight into how the AI works in Frozen Cortex. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.